Barely five minutes after we arrive, Hungarian policemen stop us in our tracks. We're at Hungary's border with Croatia, recording a report on the migrant crisis. But this officer says we can't film because we're missing a particular document. The police seem to want official authorization. Only the public TV channel M1 can provide. We tried to check with M1, but they turned down all our interview requests. A journalist who agreed to speak to us pulled out at the last minute. We decided to watch a news bulletin on M1 with a sociologist. It's extremely boring and totally manipulative. They call refugees illegal or migrants because, like that, they're criminals. It's constant propaganda to create a fear of refugees. 420 million euros. That's how much the government has ploughed into public media. It's the same amount it spends on education. But public media has not attracted big audiences. The National Media Council is made up exclusively of members of the ruling Fidesz party. I've not read anything criticizing this organization. Nomination is one thing, what's happening in practice is quite another. And I think that's more important than who's been nominated. Any EU member state has a political character. In the studios of Hungary's biggest private TV station, it's time for the news. The 50-minute show has the largest audience in the country, but today the politics slot is brief. It's a world of difference from the bulletins broadcast in 2014 by RTL Club. When the government introduced a 40% advertising tax on the TV channel, it started producing more critical news coverage, examining alleged corruption in the prime minister's entourage. RTL's only rival, TV2, was exempt from the tax. It had just been bought by a close ally of Viktor Orban. If you weak one day, then you do uh, a lot of bad to your democracy. So I always ask uh, the journalists to be brave when they ask, because that shows clearly that the press can do what uh, they should do in a democracy. The government backpedaled on the tax in early 2015, bringing it down to 5.3% and imposing it on all media outlets that make money from advertising. Also earlier this year, the man behind the Shemishka media empire fell out of favour with the Prime Minister. Viktor Orban's associates had once pumped money into the newspaper Magna Nemzet, the gem of Shemishka's empire. This uh, change uh, in the relationship, which I have nothing to do with, so I cannot really tell about uh, this story because th that's their business, uh, really strengthened uh, our uh, editorial independence because uh, the owner just does not interfere. But Viktor Orban's government still keeps a watchful eye on what's being reported. This investigative journalist used to work for Index, the largest news website in Hungary. Four years ago, he resigned after discovering a paragraph had been taken out of one of his articles. Tamás Bodiki went on to launch Ad Lasso, a news site paid for by donations from citizens. On the internet, you can get critical articles and you can get investigate. You can read investigative journalism if you are actively seeking for it. But if you just watch the TV or you listen to the radio news, then you will never know about uh, corruption cases or other types of uh, wrongdoings because the mainstream is uh, uh, strictly controlled. Six journalists, 300,000 readers. Atleso's impact is still small, but it offers hope for a free press in Hungary.